nothing. Seems like a kind of a waste of time and a mathematician's thing only. It's not real physics to have something that's not doing anything. But watch this. They are going to prove that it's right by the following dirty trick. <laughs> I perhaps should uh, expand this side a little bit. I'm getting pushed off the side of the, of the board there by uh, the way I've drawn it. If this is the way the time was going, and the arrows were pointing in a sequence of directions which were very different from one another. And now I'm going to, to do a more fine calculation, uh, which I cut it even finer, and you would find, if it's fine enough, that I haven't got much difference in time, but I find a bunch of arrows essentially going around in a circle, very close to a circle, are getting nowhere, going around and around in a circle, because some of them are pointing forward, and some of them are pointing backward virtually, with a, a continuous, but for some contribute this way and some contribute that way. Now let's have some fun. Let's see if it's really true. What we're going to do is we're going to make the mirror less effective by painting it black in the right place. We're going to paint the mirror black in just those places in which the arrows are pointing the wrong way, for arrows, if it turns out that the timing is such that the arrow points this way, don't use that part. Paint that part of the mirror black. Don't use it. Make it not reflect. I know I painted the wrong curve. I should have painted My drawing is unfortunately way over here. The idea is, if the, if the arrow is this way, I take it. But any time the arrow comes out that way, if that's the time between here and here, then I paint that part of the mirror black so that those arrows don't operate. In other words, in order to test this idea that everything's canceling out, I take the parts of the mirror which the, for which the timing is just right to make arrows that point this way, or more or less that way, or at least have a bias in that direction, and the parts of the mirror that were contributing arrows whose bias was in this direction, I paint out, or if you don't like this idea of painting out, and they have enough patience, you simply cut the silver away. There is nothing. The light goes through. Worse, it can't reflect, it didn't reflect before. You got less mirror. It's going to reflect less. No, it reflects perfectly well. Because according to this picture, if I add a sequence of arrows, which are turning rapidly, and then as soon as they're supposed to come on, oh, here's the circle, here it is, down here. Excuse me, excuse me, and it's also in yellow. I add the arrows this way, they're going along all right, and as soon as they start to turn back, I don't let it go, I don't add anymore. I I've cut the silver away. And now it gets around and starts to go in the forward direction again. So I let them come. I don't paint that silver away until it starts to back up. And then I paint the silver away. I get it out. And what I end up, of course, is a lot of little strips of silver separated by clear glass. And each time the thing does that, bloop, bloop, yeah, bloop, 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 over this whole distance. And wow, what a net arrow I've got for the final result, lots of light. And so it's possible to take an ordinary mirror, flat, and cut away strips correctly in the right places, just right, strip after strip, very fine it turns out, thousandths of an inch. You know. So that when you shine light down on it this way, it bounces it off that way. This thing would only work with one color, if I've designed this very, it's called a grating. It's a gr line of lines, and it works like a charm. It's beautiful. If I use red light, and I've got that thing exactly right, it'll go right. If I use blue light, it won't work. What I have forgotten to tell you in the beginning, and I don't know whether I said it last time, is this is what happens with red light. With blue light, you get the same result, except the thicknesses are shorter. All the timing is quicker. And what the rule is for blue light, it's the same as it is for red light, except the speed at which you turn that for time is faster. You turn it more. Now, you'll notice that the place that we put those cuts was especially designed just for this rate of turning. If it turned a little more, because it's blue, and I had the cuts in the same place as I made for my theoretical red one, it turns out it all gets kinked up and it doesn't work very well. But as a matter of accident, it happens to be so that if I make two changes, First, I use blue light, and then I put the photomultiplier at a somewhat different angle, in fact, less angle. It works again with the same lines that I use for red. It's an accident. 
I cut it carefully for red, put that photo multiplier over there. It also happens, luckily, that if I change the color, it doesn't work. But if I move the photo multiplier and change the color, it's cut again about the same place. It comes out, just geometry. And therefore, what happens is actually that if you shine light down here, blue light will come over here and red light will come over there. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Because if you take this thing and turn it, when the light is fixed, you'll see colors, red and blue. I don't know whether it's come down in New Zealand or must have. We have them in the United States now on automobiles. People have these wonderful colored signs that you wonder whether the colors come from. They're so bright. And as the car moves, it changes from red to green to blue. And all they are is mirrors with lots of lines on them instead of things. So they're not reflecting in a normal manner. All right, so that is shows, really, that we cannot get rid of the area which gives zero, that it really is canceling out. And if we do torturous and clever things to it, we can demonstrate the reality of the reflections from this part of the mirror and produce some striking optical phenomena. Well, it's depend on how much of your experience is, whether this appealed to you or not, if you knew about gradings or you didn't. That's the problem with this lecture. I can go on like this explaining holograms and lasers and everything else easy, except you don't know anything about them. There's no use, but never mind. I'll try something else. <laughs> this time, I'm going to talk about light going from air to water. We would like to put the photomultiplier under water. Let's we'll suppose the experiment, they're going to arrange that. This is water. Maybe it's easier to put the source under water. And here's the source of light that we would like to know, photons. We have a small number of photons. We want to know if they're going to get there. And we have, again, the same situation, that the light can go this way to the water surface, and then that way to the photomultiplier, or go this way to the water surface, and that way to the photomultiplier. And it can go all possible, different possible angles. And every one of them contributes an amplitude. And it makes a bunch of arrows at all different kinds of angles. And what's going to be the result? Same picture as we made up there. The only part that really gives a result is when the time is changing slowly. In other words, it's a minimum or, or a maximum. Minimum. Now, in this particular case, in water, I didn't tell you about this, but in water, when you're finding the amplitude, the rate at which the thing goes around in water is slower than in air. Or better, maybe it's a better way, excuse me, better. I made an error. What I said was wrong. Light travels slower in water than it does in air. So that the time in w when you calculate for a length in water is not the same as in air because the light goes slower. So that these lengths are more important, so to speak, than in here. What you need to do to find out what's the most important of these pairs, remember as before in the case of the mirror, many of them all canceled out and didn't make any difference, but there were some that were important when the hours were always the same, when the time was minimum. So what we have to do is we have to figure out to go in here and to come down here where the time is minimum. The idea is, suppose that you could, you, had a, you were really in water and, and you went in a boat and you could only go slowly and then you could run quickly on land. But the beautiful girl is drowning here and you're the lifeguard and you can swim slower in water than you can run on land. Where do you uh, hit the water? You rush this way to the water and swim like hell. <laughs> Actually, there is a place that's a minimum, which it would be foolish of a lifeguard to analyze and calculate <laughs> under the circumstances. <laughs> but the fact is, there is a computable position in which the time is minimum, and it's some kind of a thing that looks like that. The idea is, it is not the straight line, because the straight line has too much water in it, so to speak, water path. And by moving for less water path and more land path, one makes a compromise and comes out so. And that is the reason why light is bent into water. And as a matter of fact, if you follow this thing all the way through, you can prove that the ratio of the signs of the angles of the this and the that is the ratio of the speeds in the air and the water. But the reason that it's a minimum time is the same reason as it was for a mirror. Okay. In the same way, we can understand why light goes in a straight line. It's used if we had a source here and a photo multiplier here, there are many ways the light could go. We could say the uh, photon can go from here to here. A certain amount of time, space. That's the way I've been doing it before anyway. But I'm going to be more accurate this time and tell you that the story that I said it went in a straight line before in calculating things was only an approximation. If I didn't do that, I'd get the same answer. 
because I, if I do the following, I say, not only does it go in a straight line, it could also go this way to here. It could go this way to here. Really? Really? It can really do it? Yes. It can go any way it wants. But almost always, the contributions from these different ways cancel out with each other completely because there's a nearby way that's got the arrow the other way. But if you can find a way where if you change the paths a little bit, nearby paths, don't make any difference to the time, then you've got the place where most of the contribution is coming from. And uh, the story is as follows, that if you have a path like this, a nearby path can be made that's shorter. That is, has a different time. A distinctly shorter, a lot shorter by moving it in. And so you get a very different time. But that the minimum time comes for the path that's a straight line. And so the most important contribution is from the straight line. Remember that in the case of the mirror, I say the most important part of the contribution is near the place that is the minimum. It isn't exactly that one arrow that does it. No, it's the contribution over quite a range. And so it turns out that a light does not really go in a straight line, but it smells the neighboring lines and it uses the area around it, just like a section of mirror is necessary to get the full reflection. A section of space is necessary. If you were to put blocks in here so as to not allow the path to wander too far away, and made these very tight so that it was try to go in a straight line, you would discover that the light from this source, if you put the photomultiplier here, for instance, and didn't have these blocks, no, if you put these blocks in like this and had the photomultiplier here, let's say the blocks are pretty far apart, and put the multiplier in such a way that that line is not allowed, that corresponds to using the piece of the mirror that's in the wrong place. But if this thing squeezes tighter and tighter, after a while, light begins to come here. The reason it comes is that you've only got a few of the arrows. It's just as if you used the... I didn't show you in this case. It's the same idea. If you did have the mirror in the wrong place but used a very short mirror, then there's not enough range for the arrows to cancel each other. Just a few that go one way and it stops. And so what happens is that there's a little... If you cut this very fine, the light spreads, that it doesn't go in a straight line. And if you try, therefore, to squeeze light into a small hole to make sure it's going in a straight line, you discover that it no longer goes in a straight line. <laughs> this is a, a few examples of how uh, the theory of uh, thing has worked out. Uh, let me just do one or two, one more, which is interesting. Instead of dealing with all the, the net result of adding all these in the empty space of adding all these different possible pads is in fact turns out to be the same as if you just took this one pad very closely as we for approximately well essentially that uh, if uh, I mean by that there's just another factor that the angles are the same if uh, we think about this in a special case let's draw an artificial line here that, that means nothing it's just a geo like the equator of the earth it's just a line and then consider paths which are straight in two sections and ask, what about light going this way, this way, and this way, this way? So we don't have too many different paths to add. We restrict them to be double straight line sections. Then by exactly, the, the answer is exactly the same as for the case of the mirror. The time to go this way is a big time, and this changes and changes, and it changes rapidly. And if I plot it this way, the time for these different things, this is a long one, that's a short one, that's a long one. This time you can figure the time immediately in your head because the time is just the length of that line and you can see that that's long and that that's short. Now, let's have some a different kind of a game. Let's do something to make this one longer so that it's the same as that one. Let's fool the light so that all the pairs, all the pairs are the same length of time. How can we? I told you it went slower in glass than in air. So let's put a piece of glass in here to slow it up so as to take a little longer. Let's say we're not going to do anything to the path out here. That's going to be the key time that we're going to make everything equal to. Now the one that would go through here straight would have got there too fast. We slow it up for a while, and by slowing it up, we bring it so that the time it takes is the same.